All right, the weekend's over. We're back here in the hunt quarters, and I have a little secret to tell you guys. I came in on the weekend and got some shit done. I didn't film any of it, and my RX-7 is now not running anymore. That is a table full of bits. We've got some old bits, and we've got some new bits. The new bits are pretty epic. And you're probably wondering, Nick, you just finished the car. Why'd you take it apart already? Well, the answer is really simple. I got the car to seven stock. That was my goal. I told the world I was gonna get it there to debut it, and that's what I did. Now it's time to go back and fix some things that I'm not happy with. And a few of those things are involving the intercooler system and the intake system. All along, I've been planning on running the Elite uh, upgraded intake system, which is here. This is the this is the upper plenum portion of the Elite intake manifold. Along with that portion of the intake manifold, there is also a lower intake manifold, which I'll show you. I've already got it mocked up on the engine. So right now, this is just in here for a trial fit. Um, it does fit, and we will be moving forth using that intake with our turbo um, location with the turbo-blown manifold. Uh, I did put it in already, and it does clear by about that much. The other piece of this equation that I wasn't happy with from the get was the intercooler setup. The intercooler, intercooler core itself is actually fine. I've got a rag over right now just so I don't mess up the fins. Um, but essentially, this intercooler core is, is fine and adequate for, for what I'm doing here. However, I don't like the way the, uh, the piping is routed uh, coming out and into the intercooler. So as you can see, the manufacturer of this, Rotary Works, put a really aggressive inward kick on this side. And that's because typically um, you have things here in, a, here in a stock engine bay that it needs to get around and go back to the intake manifold. Uh, with our situation, we can actually take it now straight back to the intake manifold. And then on this one, we could actually use a little bit more kick this direction, so it's more straight. Now, there's two ways you can go about fixing this problem. You can cut those off and reposition them and re-weld. Because you're re-welding over something that was already welded, you can clean it up as best you can, but it's never gonna look great, I don't think, in my opinion. Um, the other option is to cut these off, weld patches over the holes, flip the inner cooler upside down, and move the, the neck to the, the other side of the end tanks, which would be a clean start. But in the back of my head, I'm always gonna know that there's patches in the bottom of the intercooler. And for whatever reason, that will make me lose sleep at night. I'm weird, I don't know. So, what we've actually decided to do, is we've actually sourced a Garrett intercooler core, and we've reached out to ATP Turbo and actually got two end tanks, a left and a right side end tank that are cast. We're gonna weld those onto the Garrett intercooler, then we'll have a whole new setup, which for me, I think is much better and will look a lot better. Oh, look who just got here. Hello. Good morning, sir. What you got there? Breakfast, baby. Breakfast? Twix and Coke for breakfast. <laughs> so, that leads me to the intercooler piping. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create new intercooler piping that's gonna eliminate the use of all of these rubber couplers. Long story short, we got the car done, we made it to seven stock as we planned. But now it's time to go back and fix some things that we weren't happy with. So today we're going to go ahead and get on to a few of those things. We'll bring you guys along for the journey. And yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. So after a little powwow, Ricky and I had some catching up to do. It's been a few days since we saw each other. So whole 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and brought in our new end tanks. Again, these are ordered from ATP. And what's cool is this Garrett core, which we purchased from Garrett, we basically spec it to the size we need and they make a bunch of different sizes with no end tanks, which is really cool because you can go on atpturbo.com and pick these guys up. And so what these are is basically a, a cast aluminum uh, version of what most people make by hand, end tank wise. Um, these already come pre-cast with your inlet and outlet. <laughs> the other thing we're gonna be doing today 
This was just for mock-up purposes. We just wanted to sleep well tonight knowing that what we ordered was right. Now, this is our stock intake manifold. This here is our, our old gasket for the intake system. And this mounts between the block and the intake manifold. As you can see, the stock intake manifold has additional porting on it that's not necessary in, for our application now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our intake gasket on here and line it up with these screws or bolts. So now we're lined up. And so what we're finding is that with the gasket lined up, we're finding the Elite intake manifold actually has a lot of material in here. They basically casted it as though it was a stock manifold on this portion. What we wanna do is we wanna use our die chem pen and we're actually gonna color the flange black and we're gonna take a scribe and actually scribe around where this gasket rests onto the manifold and then we're going to go back with a tool and actually shape reshape this um, to make the airflow a little bit better you can see there's a lot of material in here still that's stopping airflow in order to make a higher horsepower engine it's important to have good airflow so we're gonna go ahead and clean those up today or sand those out and uh get some smooth airflow massive fail i just realized that uh two Two fails. One, I left the keys for the FD at home. Again, this is the third time Ricky and I have done this. Two of them are on me. The third one is... You're winning. Well, it was also on me, but at any rate, I also forgot the tool that we need to use to port this. So I'm either gonna have to go buy one today to bring you guys a video or wait till tomorrow. Um, and I also wanted to go back and show you guys the difference in these manifolds. Um, this is the stock intake manifold or plenum I guess is the best way to call it it's very uh, very unique and if you've ever seen one before you'll always know what they look like um, and then this is the the elite version and now I will say the elite version is much prettier uh, it is basically a replica of the Cosmo 13b right. intake plenum which definitely flows better and it has this big big area for storing air uh, so we need to swap the studs over for the throttle body. We do, we are waiting on a spacer because as you guys can see, this manifold is much shorter in overall length. It's hard to tell on camera, but it is about three inches shorter, four inches shorter. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is on the car, when you put that in, we're gonna now have interference with our um, Elite oil filler neck. Elite Rotary Shop is cool enough to actually send us their it's a three or four inch spacer that goes in line, so you can still use your stock throttle body. We'll get into that later, why I'm still using a thro stock throttle body. A lot of you guys are probably wondering why I don't go with a 90 millimeter or a Mustang throttle body or something like that. There are reasons uh, we are keeping the stock throttle body. At any rate, that spacer allows us to put this all together and not have issues with uh, clearance on the intercooler piping to the oil filler neck. We can run all these bitch in Elite products. So, along with that, we also need to upgrade the fuel rail. This is our old fuel rail. This was had two 2000 cc injectors uh, into the stock lower intake manifold. We are now going to have um, we're now going to have four. I've got tape over the other two provisions here and here, uh, and those are being overnighted to me as well. So we're going to have four 2000 cc injectors on the lower intake manifold. And then we will have two more, so six total 2,000 cc injectors, um, which are already installed here on the uh, primary fuel rail. So we've got a lot of work to do before this thing's back up and running, but we've got pretty much everything here to do it. All right, so this is a die chem pen. It's basically the same stuff we use out of a bottle with a with a like a paintbrush at DNA Garage when we did the porting on the engine. This is just a little more handy version, and what it does is it allows you a dark surface to scribe on, so that we can port this and we know where to port to. So we just use the scribe tool, just cheap little pick tool, anything you can use to kind of just etch the metal really shallow um, on the die cam. And as we just showed you, this is where we're gonna cut to. So it's actually quite a bit of material there. Now I should say that Elite actually leaves these manifolds pretty fat 
I guess is the best way to say it. Um, because guys are actually running 50 pounds of boost through these and big horsepower numbers through these intake manifolds. They're basically meant as sort of a blank slate, not really blank, but a slate for you to actually customize it to what you want it to do. So they make the material quite thick so that you can cut away material as needed uh, and get as extreme as you want, which is pretty cool. So kudos to Elite for thinking that and, uh, and, and making a product that's actually tunable by the end user. All right, so right now with the Elite Manifold, they actually tapped already a very small hole for different types of- uh, Stock sensor maybe? Yeah. Eh, no, I don't think so. I think this, this is, is a Haltech. Oh no, yeah, you're right, because we, we drilled this one as well. Yeah. We're gonna drill this and then tap it. So the Haltech sensor, air temperature sensor gonna feed the apron went on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't touch come, me. Come towards your right a little bit. Nice and straight. Bro, you send in it. The, you in the you in the angle. Okay, send it. Oh yeah, like butter. Like a glove. Like butter. Alright, so a couple hours has passed. I've been off to the hardware store, picked up the proper tap so that we can get this intake manifold tapped. Ricky had to go off to work, so I'm finishing up the tapping and installing of the air temp sensor and then also going to go ahead and move on to porting as well. But we'll get on to that in a minute. So we got our tap and we picked up a little bit of pressure lube which we'll use for this tapping process. All right, so got the hole threaded. Air intake temp sensor is now in place and it has been Loctited so that it won't come out. Job one is done. Now it's on to the porting, which I already have set up over here. And as you guys saw, we've got it die cam and I went off and purchased the new tool that we're gonna use to support that this is it it's a wee little thing it's an Ingersoll Rand die grinder and I picked up two carbide bits that are meant for aluminum that's these guys here if it'll focus um, and these are basically for cleaning up cleaning the material out of the intake manifold so we can smooth it out with a sanding bit at the end all right so this is our first go with the uh, <laughs> With the new die grinder and carbide bits, um, I think we definitely need a regulator because this thing will spin really fast. Uh, but these carbide bits for aluminum are definitely what we were after. Uh, it made really quick work of what I was doing here. And um, yeah, so I guess to explain to you guys what we're trying to do, the, the goal here is not just to open up the ports. I mean, one, yes, we want to open the ports. But two, what we want to do is create a very smooth flowing surface so that when the air is coming into here, it doesn't get caught up on anything and be turbulent. There's some deep grooves in here that I'll go back and clean up with, um, we'll clean up with a bit that's a bit less coarse um, and we'll smooth this out probably with a stone or a sandpaper type bit. But this works really good for getting the, ma the main amount of material out of there quickly. Um, just have to be really careful because it takes it very quickly. So um, this is my first go at this. Uh, I'm an expert by no means, so I'm sure a bunch of you that are watching have done this a million times before. I'm probably thinking I'm screwing this up or I could be doing it differently, but I'm learning on my own. So um, hopefully this goes well and someday I'll be really good at this. All right, so step two of the porting process is done. I didn't pick up the camera because I was busy working. Got it all ported out. It's not perfect but it's a great job for my first try at this. Um, I think probably going forth, what I need to do is get, probably there's more stages involved. I did a two part, basically a two part porting. The first part was removing most of the material or all of the material that needed to be removed and cleaned up. Then I went back with a stone bit and cleaned up all of the harsh marks that I put in there. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's very smooth, um, but I'm sure you can go to, many extremes polishing that and making it 
as smooth as possible. For this application, what I've done is great. It's better than what normally would have happened. Normally you would just bolt all this together and go. So this is a step in the right direction. It is not uh, probably up to race car builder standards or spec, but uh, it's up to my standard and my spec, which is um, get this car done and get on the dyno and make some good power, So, which we know it's gonna do. Thank you guys so much for following us, for subscribing to our channel, for liking our videos and leaving us awesome comments. We appreciate it every day. So boys, that's all for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.